Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Spectrum Analyzers, Tracking Generators. In this presentation, we'll explain how tracking generators enable spectrum analyzers to make scalar network measurements. This presentation assumes a very basic familiarity with spectrum analyzers. If you're new to spectrum analyzers, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentation, Understanding Basic Spectrum Analyzer Operation, before beginning this presentation. Spectrum analyzers are one of the most important instruments in radio frequency test and measurement, and they're generally used to make three different types of measurements. The first type is a basic display of power versus frequency. The second type consists of more complex measurements, such as third order intercept, modulation depth, channel power, etc. The third type is analysis and or decoding of digitally modulated signals, such as Wi-Fi or cellular. In all three of these cases, the analyzer normally measures an externally generated signal, that is, a signal which is being created outside of the spectrum analyzer itself. And in most cases, this external signal is measured by repeatedly sweeping a relatively narrow filter across a defined frequency range, or span. Another common radio frequency measurement instrument is a network analyzer. A network is a device with one or more ports that can absorb, pass, or reflect radio frequency energy. A filter is a good example of a two-port network. Network analyzers usually have multiple inputs, and they perform measurements by injecting a signal into one port, and then measuring the signal reflected back from that port, and or the signal emerging from the other ports of the device. Common one-port applications include antenna testing, or distance default measurements. Common two-port applications include characterizing cables, filters, amplifiers, etc. In addition to making scalar or magnitude-only measurements, most network analyzers can also make vector measurements, which include phase information as well. This is why network analyzers are often referred to as vector network analyzers or VNAs. A tracking generator enables a spectrum analyzer to perform basic one and two port network analysis. Similar to a VNA, the stimulus signal is generated and or controlled by the analyzer. This stimulus is a single narrow tone or CW signal whose frequency tracks the spectrum analyzer measurement sweep. We'll explain this graphically on the next slide. The analyzer measures the amplitude or the magnitude of the stimulus signal after it's either passed through a device, as shown in this example, or after the signal has been reflected by a device. Another way of saying this is that a tracking generator enables measurement of a device's frequency response. That is, how much power is transmitted through or reflected by the device as a function of frequency. Let's look at this graphically. Recall that in most cases, a spectrum analyzer measures an externally supplied signal, and it does this by sweeping over a user-defined span, that is, between a start and a stop frequency. When the tracking generator is enabled, it creates a narrow, constant amplitude stimulus signal. This signal tracks the measurement frequency as the analyzer sweeps over the span. If we connected the analyzer's generator, or RF output, directly to the analyzer's RF input, the result would be a roughly straight line on the spectrum analyzer display. If, however, we were to insert a device between the RF out and RF in ports, in this example a low-pass filter, the spectrum analyzer would display the frequency response of this filter, that is how much the filter attenuates signals as a function of frequency. Network measurements made using a tracking generator are often sufficient for many basic RF applications. As we saw a few moments ago, tracking generators may be an internal, integrated component of a spectrum analyzer, but this functionality can also be obtained using an external signal generator as a source. This separate, standalone instrument is controlled and configured by the spectrum analyzer, typically over a GPIB or LAN connection. This allows synchronization of the generator output 
and analyzer measurement sweep, and thus enables the same types of measurements as those made on analyzers with an internal integrated tracking generator. Next, let's talk about reflection measurements. One port reflection or S11 measurements require the separation of the transmitted and received or reflected signals. A good example of this is an antenna measurement. The separation of these signals is performed using something called a visoire bridge, or more generically, a suitable directional coupler. In some cases, this visoire bridge may be an externally connected device. In this example, we connect our device under test, here an antenna, to the DUT port on the bridge. Our external signal generator output is attached to the IN port of the bridge, and our spectrum analyzer measures the amount of reflected signal present at the OUT port of the bridge. An external visoire bridge is usually required when an external generator is used. But when using a spectrum analyzer with an integrated internal tracking generator, the visoire bridge is often internally integrated as well. And in this case, reflection measurements can be performed simply by directly connecting the device under test to the RF or generator out port of the analyzer. Normalization and calibration are important for all network measurements because these can remove the effect or influence of the measurement setup. For example, any cables, connectors, etc. that are between the device under test and the analyzer. By performing normalization or calibration, measurements are effectively made at the point where this normalization or calibration occurs. This is commonly called the calibration plane. In the case of transmission measurements, a normalization is performed by placing a through standard at the point where the device under test would be measured. For reflection or one port measurements, open, short, and match calibration standards are placed where the connection to the device under test would be made. Normalization and calibration are important because network measurements are made relative to the normalization or calibration results. Let's end with a brief summary. Tracking generators enable spectrum analyzers to make both one port or reflection and two port or transmission measurements. This is similar to the functionality found in vector network analyzers or VNAs. This tracking generator may be an integrated internal component of a spectrum analyzer, but it may also be an external signal generator that is configured and controlled over LAN or GPIB connections. Note that when using tracking generators to make reflection or S11 measurements, a so-called visoire bridge or directional coupler is needed. Visoire bridges may be integrated into spectrum analyzers, or they may be external devices. In all cases, normalization and calibration can be used to remove the effect of cables and other elements in the test setup, and thereby ensure more accurate results. As with other network measurements, measurements made using tracking generators are always relative to a normalized trace. This concludes our presentation Understanding Spectrum Analyzers, Tracking Generators. If you'd like to learn more about spectrum analyzers, network analysis, or measurement instruments from Rodi and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.